Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Noah, and in this video I'm going to be talking about 20 steps and tips on how to overcome lust and sexual sin. I'm making this video first and foremost because this is a rampant problem, a rampant sin in the world nowadays, in society, and also among people who profess to be Christians nowadays, that they are very loaded up with lust, or they're very bound to sexual sin, and when people are watching pornography for years straight or for even decades and it's just normal to lust after people in society in general you know uh, people have a very big stronghold of this and also I'm making this because of those people who have that stronghold when they're coming to God they don't yet very mu have very much spiritual power or they don't know how to discern spiritual warfare and cast down imaginations and uh, they want to overcome the sin, but they don't yet know how to discern the steps that they need to take to overcome uh, the sin. So, uh, you know, we'll also be talking about a couple of tips on how to have your natural affections restored where you don't have to be, uh, you know, constantly fighting these imaginations and fantasies the demons are trying to give you. I'm now getting to the place in my walk where you know, I can go throughout a day, I'm not saying it never happens, but I can go throughout a day where I don't have to deal with a battle of possibly dwelling uh, or being tempted to dwell on a sexual fantasy or not. And uh, you can have that restored. But like I said, once you've been watching years of pornography and sexual lust and all of that, your mind becomes very corrupt to sexual desire and whatnot. And I want to talk about a couple ways also that uh, that can be restored, you know, long term in general as well. So uh, you guys can also send this video to people who you know who are trying to be set free from sexual sin because it should be chock full of everything that, that an individual would need to be able to overcome sexual sin. Uh, so I wanted to first read this verse, Ephesians 5, 5. It says, For you, this, you know this, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So uh, anybody who is living willfully in this sin, as of today, they are not going to inherit the kingdom of God, whether it be fornication, whether it be pornography, whether it be adultery, uh, you know, whatever it may be, whether it be homosexuality, any of these sexual sins will not allow you into the kingdom of God. They are willful sins, and if you continue in them, you're not going to make it to heaven. Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And, uh, you know, pornography is an abomination. You can be set free from it, but you cannot continue in on it. And also ma masturbation as well. People will try to justify that, but be not deceived. You know, it's unrighteousness. You are not yielding your members to righteousness when you do so. God did not create you with your members to do such a thing. And uh, when you're doing so, it's you're, you're pretty much actually, as I've heard it explained before, you're offering your your body fluids as a demonic sex ritual because there's blood in those body fluids and you're offering that unto a spirit of lust that you are committing the sexual act with in the spirit realm so uh you need to be set free from that as well and i hope all of these points can help bring you to a better place of understanding what you need to do and to get there uh very quickly and accurately so uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is you need to fear God. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And Jesus also taught the fear of God in, in the New Testament. He said, fear God, who has the ability to throw your body and soul into hell fire. Yeah, fear him. So, uh, you know, the fear of the Lord endures forever. And when I first came to God, it took me a while to get convicted of sin. But when I started to realize that I needed to give up sexual immorality, that I needed to give up pornography, if I didn't get, give up those things, that I was not going to inherit the kingdom of God, that I was not going to continue on with my relationship with Christ or officially start it. And uh, like I said, that, you know, I was going to go to hell if I continued on in these things and uh, that I needed to be set free from it. So when I understood the fear of God that I would go to hell if I continued in on this, that brought me to the place of starting to try to figure out how I could be set free from it. So you need to fear God, and um, that can bring us to the place of desperation where we cry out to God for Him to set us free. Um, okay, so the next po point that I wanted to talk on is that you need to start cutting off the outlets 
where the devil can use to easily tempt you with sexual sin, especially if you haven't overcame the pornography and masturbation yet, you need to cut off whatever outlets that you will not be strong enough to, to um, you know, be partaking in whether it be social media. Like for me, I had I deleted Facebook for a while and I deleted Instagram when I was first dealing with this because you know you can just be scrolling through on those internet sites and uh, before you know it, you see something that is immodest and, the, and you, you know, you're just so loaded up with lust at that point that it is very hard to resist. So I've got Facebook back since then but at that point, I was not able to withhand it, with you know, withhandle it. And don't try to give the excuse to yourself that, oh, well, I can handle going to this place where there's a bunch of whorish women dressed, or I can just scroll throughout this internet. I mean, if you even need to get off Google because of pornography and whatnot, uh, do it. You know, like Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, you got to slice it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. For it's better to enter life maimed than it is hellfire with both of your members, right? And um, you need to set up these walls before you go on. You know, sit down and, and write it out or pray about it. About, okay, I cannot go into this certain area. Okay, I cannot visit this social media site. And set those barriers, barriers beforehand and not in the midst of you being tempted. Because then they are way more subject to you, you know, overtrotting those barriers and not actually following them. So cut off any outlet where the devil can easily tempt you into sexual sin because he will use those outlets most definitely um, if you are trying to be set free from lust and you know he would obviously see that. Okay so uh, the next thing is you need to start training your eyes to look away from sexual immorality especially in the very beginning of when you're easily tempted right. Matthew 6 23 says um, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in uh, the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So if you have an evil eye where you're lusting after women, your excuse me, your whole body is still full of darkness. So uh, you know, in the Bible it says, I've co I've set a covenant with my eyes that I ha will not look at any wicked thing, right? And that's what you need to do is you need to start being conscious of when, you know, a seducing spirit or, you know, just the demons in general are trying to throw your eyes to look back over your head to look at some lustful women. There's been times in my walk where it's just insanely crazy. Like, like there will be somebody who is dressed immodestly and I will have to look at like a 47 degree angle to be able to see that person and out of nowhere my head will just be thrown like that and you know it's the devil trying to tempt you so you need to learn to train your eyes and to be conscious if you are looking at a woman and you're you're sitting there staring for five seconds or whether it be a man whatever it may be and you start undressing that person with your eyes you need to be conscious of that and start to turn your eyes even quicker than that when you really get this down you should be able to turn your eyes in in point two seconds you should be able to look back or even when you re get really good at it you will discern beforehand when the devil is trying to throw your he your head at a certain way so that you can resist him from even drawing your eyes away but that's what you need to do is is start to train your eyes to not lust and to not look at women with lust or to look at men with lust when I say women in this video, guys, uh, you can use that interchangeably that I'm talking about men or talking about women. If you're a woman, you know, lusting after a man or if you're a man lusting after a woman or, you know, whatever it may be. I'm just, you know, when I say women, you can interchange that with men as well, too. So um, anyways, let's see. Uh, the next point was that you need to start recognizing when fantasies are entering into your mind and you need to cut them off instantly. This is very huge because if you are sitting there all day, you're, you're at work all day and you're just dwelling and dwelling upon scenes from porno clips and you know past uh, sex relationships with people and fantasizing those things in your mind, well, first of all, you're dwelling upon that in sin. You're not supposed to be doing that in general. Um, but if you do that all day long and then you get home and, you know, it's it's late at night and you're sitting in your bed or you're sitting alone and whatnot and you get tempted to go watch pornography or to masturbate or to fornicate or whatever it may be, you are going to have way less power. You're going to be like, 
why can't I overcome? You're asking yourself, why can't I overcome this? Yet you're dwelling upon sexual sin all day long. You're dwelling on these fantasies all day long. And you can't expect to have power over the sin when you are fantasizing that in your mind. Because, you know, you have to recognize the battle is in the mind. And it first starts there. The devil wants you to start dwelling on a fantasy and to imagine people undressed in, in your mind. And then if he can get you to dwell on that, then, you know, the next steps will be to actually do it in the physical. So you need to start to cut off those fantasies in your mind and recognize when he's throwing your face, when he's throwing your eyes to look, and also when he's throwing your mind to dwell upon fantasies. Um, and, uh, you know, that's very important, like I said. And uh, one of the main things that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to sit down, not as an empty promise to God, because... At, at first, I remember typing out a paper where I said, God, I promise I will never do this again, but then I ended up doing it. I don't recommend going that fashion, but just sitting down and praying about that, God, I never want to masturbate again. God, I never want to watch pornography again. God, I never want to commit homosexuality again. Whatever it may be, whatever sexual sin it may be, sit down and consciously make that decision. And uh, even if you do fall after that, still hold to that conscious decision that I'm never going to do this again. But that really should be the main point right there. When you get to the point of, of really having the fear of God, of really fighting the sexual sin, and then you get to that point, it's like, all right, I'm making this decision. And then you can be right by the breakthrough once you have been doing that thing. You've been resisting the lust all day long and whatnot. Now, some people might be able to be set free from certain sins in a matter of five seconds. They just say a prayer and boom, they're delivered from alcoholism. Boom, they're delivered from doing drugs and whatnot. But there is, you have to also recognize that there is a drawing process to that as well. And for many people, that is definitely not the case with sexual sin. So I'm not trying to make this this long, drawn-out process. It should not be a super long pro. This should not be something where you're having to deal with month after month after month. You should put these actions into, into play in your life, and you should be able to overcome this very uh, quickly. So sitting down and making that decision that you are never going to do it again. And also recognizing that this is a spiritual fight. That you're fighting, you know, a succubus spirit. That you're fighting a seducing spirit. You're fighting a spirit of lust. And it's not just this psychological release as, you know, us, you know, atheists will try to say, oh, we, we have to do this or you're going to get testicular cancer or whatever it may be. That's most definitely not the case. I haven't masturbated or watched pornography for I over, you know, close to a year and a half, I want to say. And, um, you know, it's, it's not even, it's not even bothersome, you know, that's just a, a straight out flat lie and you don't have to do that, you know? And, uh, so recognize that this is a spiritual fight that you're bound up with the spirit of lust if you're still in the sexual sin and uh, that you need to fight it with spiritual warfare the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds and we'll be getting more into that um but uh yeah so the next thing is when you come to this place uh like for me personally i was really starting to fight the pornography and the sexual sin and then i got to this place where when i when i did that sin i literally felt like death after I watched the pornography, I literally felt like death. And that's your conscience being restored. And that is your eyes be opening to the ramification of how bad your sin is. And what you need to do at this point is truly call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Do this at any point you can to be set free. But what I'm saying in general is you need to call upon the name of Jesus. If you're sitting in your bed and you're being tempted with sexual sin, just call upon the name of Jesus. Bind the spirit of lust in the name of Jesus and start praying. I mean, obviously you need to start to have a healthy prayer relationship uh, with God and whatnot. Um, but calling upon his name and asking to be set free, not so that you can have a better relationship with your spouse not so that you can be free to, from demonic torment, but because you want to live for Jesus, because you want to be set free for his namesake and not out, out of any selfish uh, desire, but because you realize that your sin is terrible before God and that you don't want to sin anymore. 
you know, it's very important that you sit down and make that conscious decision, like I said, that I don't want to sin anymore and uh, pray about it and whatnot. All right, so the next thing is... Um, at this point, you're probably going to going to want to get deliverance. Um, if if you are very much bound up with this sexual sin, I personally had to get deliverance. I mean, I didn't have to. It could have been more of a drawn out process, but God led me to get deliverance. I was searching literally every which way on how to get free from the spirit of lust, and I. And God led me to a deliverance video on YouTube. You know, I didn't find anybody to pray deliverance for me. I wish I would have because it would have been way more effective. But, you know, before I know it, I'm just sitting there on YouTube watching uh, videos about deliverance and people praying deliverance. And uh, eventually I, I watched the deliverance video long enough and um, I felt the spirit of lust burn up in my chest. And I never watched pornography. I never masturbated again after that. I may have gotten close. I may have kind of watched her went up, but I never fully committed that sin and actually, you know, masturbated since that point. So the deliverance can be very key. And obviously, you know, I recommend that everybody gets deliverance. Everybody needs deliverance. Um, but uh, yeah, very important. And if anybody needs deliverance prayer, I can pray that for you. But you have to, re you have to. Uh, be doing the fighting. You have to be learning to train your eyes. You have to be, you know, developing your prayer relationship with God, casting down the imaginations. All of the things that I've been talking about need to be set into play, and you need to be desperate for God before the deliverance will come. Otherwise, you're still in agreement with the demon, and, you know, it'll either not come out, or it will just come back with seven spirits more wicked than itself, right? Um, let's see. And, uh, the next thing that I wanted to say is when you get free from, uh, this sin or e even before, so when you're getting close to overcoming the stronghold, you have to recognize that the spirit of lust and seduction, they go hand in hand with one another. And, uh, you know, lust can try to seduce you and you have to recognize that that seducing will be very subtle and it will try to justify you to just take one look, just take one look at pornography, just go to the site one time just you know just uh look at that person as naked just for five seconds or something like that and that can be all that it takes you know especially you shouldn't do that in general anyways but especially at the position that you're at if you're still bound up in the sexual sin or you just got set free from it it can be just that little bit and before you know it you've you've masturbated again or you've committed fornication and uh it's very important to recognize that the devil is going to try to attack you again and bring in this subtle suggestion to, to just look one time and um you need to recognize that that temptation is going to be coming and you need to say no not even for one second like i said make that conscious decision of i'm never going to do it again and i'm never even going to give into it for one second because if you give into it for one second that could be the complete downfall and then you know you have committed willful sin and uh, you need to repent of that you might need to completely start over you might not even have another chance the bible says let there not be any fornicator among you, as Esau, who av after he sold his birthright, he sought God with tears, but found no space for repentance. So that should, you know, instill the fear of God that Esau was seeking God with tears to try to find repentance, but he sold his birthright. And the Bible says, let there not be any fornicators among you, lest that come uh, lest that, you know, lest that happens to you. So you need to fight the sin very hard and never look back. Jesus said, whosoever looks, whoever puts his hand to the plow and looks back, he is not fit for the kingdom of God. And, you know, it's, it's very serious. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is that you need to replace the unrighteousness with righteous things. Galatians 5.16 says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill uh, the flesh or the lust of the flesh, I believe that's supposed to say. But regardless, what it's saying is, if you walk in the spirit, you inherently will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So there is a time and place for where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to resist. I recognize I'm being tempted with sin and I'm not going to sin. But if that is only your only strategy of spiritual warfare is, I'm just not going to sin, you are just doing it in possibly a carnal mindset. 
you know, we need to, the way that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh is by walking in the spirit. And what you need to do for that is replace that unrighteousness with righteous things. So start reading the word of God, read the New Testament straight all the way through. Start meditating upon the things of God instead of dwelling on sexual fantasies all day long. Start meditating upon the goodness of God, the severity of God, his word, his kingdom, his holiness, his righteousness. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added. You know, start having a, a healthy prayer life. Start fellowshipping with brethren, uh, you know, praying in tongues, all of these things, right? You are walking in the spirit and then you just inherently will not fulfill the lust of the flesh and also casting down those imaginations like I talked about. The next point I wanted to talk about is I recommend that an individual goes about his day norm normally for the most part. You know, there should be that sense of isolation of those barriers where you are not apt to fall into the sexual sin. But what I'm trying to say is don't just sit inside of your bedroom all day and sit there and say, oh, what if I masturbate? Oh, what if I watch pornography and think that stuff in your mind and just be worrisome of you doing those things. But go about your normal day and walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you are just worrying about not sinning and you're sitting in your room and, you know, you are not deep into the faith yet and whatnot, you are very apt to be heavily tempted, especially if you're alone in your room, alone in your house, or whatever it may be. There is going to be that high probability of temptation. But if you're out fellowshipping with the brethren, there is going to be a way less um, accessibility for the devil to be easily tempting you when you're out in public or, you know, keep going to your job and whatnot. Obviously, you know, there might be a time and place where if you're first being born again, you might want to leave the job that you're currently at. I'm not trying to give advice for that in general, but I'm just saying for scenario sake. So I uh, just wanted to briefly talk about that. And uh, the next thing that everybody, or not everybody, but well, pretty much everybody that I know that is a true Christian that's not just full of head knowledge, um, talks about having these sexual dreams after they overcome the pornography after they overcome the sexual immorality and I have a video about dreams um, in uh, in you know in my playlist or not in my playlist but you know the the list of videos you can go down and there's a long video about you know demonic dreams and whatnot um, but uh, this th I just wanted to talk about it briefly uh, Matthew 13 25 says but well men slept his enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way so uh, what the devil is going to do when you stop ma masturbating and watching pornography is he's going to rape you in your dr dreams, most likely. Uh, you know, if you were very loaded up with lust, if you had spiritual wise and, and covenants with succubus and whatnot, he is going to come and tempt you as females, you know, that you know from your past life or as your favorite porn star and stuff like that and come to you and tempt you in your dreams. Now, you do want to fight this as hard as you possibly can, but don't feel like you're condemned because you fell and you got raped by a demon in one of your dreams or you fell to sexual sin in one of your dreams. Yeah, you should aim to never do it. You should, you should feel bad when it happens. You should feel convicted when it happens. You need to repent right away, but don't feel as though it's willful sin and that's just the end of the road right there just because you had a sexual dream. When I overcame masturbation and pornography, I literally had these dreams pretty much 66% of the nights. And uh, I felt really bad about it. I didn't really understand it, but I kept pushing through. And, you know, they slowly decrease as time goes on, as you get more deliverance from the spirit of lust, as you, you know, have those natural affections restored, as you're not dwelling upon those fantasies and whatnot. And now, you know, it's, I still have these dreams sometimes, but it's maybe one fifteenth of what it used to be when I first got born again, right? And what, like, a, like the scripture says, the enemy is coming to sow seed into your heart to fill you back up with lust during the dream so that then you are more apt to fall in the physical. So you have to recognize that that is what they are trying to do. I remember, you know, when I first started having these dreams, um, I had one of these dreams and the next day I, I was just so tempted with lust and I'm like, why is this happening right now? I've already overcame the lust yet I'm still being tempted so hard, but you know, it didn't make sense to me, but 
the devil is once you overcome something in the physical then you have then you start battling it in the dream realm so whatever it may be you know when you're when you've overcome it in the physical the devil still wants to try to get at you and he's going to try to tempt you in the dream realm and then you have to start battling it there as well so don't get discouraged when this initially happens and um you know fight it as hard as possible like i said some things you're going to want to do after it happens is is pray for a removal of the seed that was implanted in you by the devil if the devil projected lust into you by the dream pray that that would be removed out of your heart out of your soul um pray that all programming that the demons tried to do to you over the dreams would be undone and that god would renew your mind for the day um pray for a pure mind uh and beforehand before you go to sleep pray that angels would be encamped around your bedroom pray for an awareness in your dreams pray for you know power over your dreams or over demonic dreams pray a hedge of protection uh around your bedroom now the dreams still might come even though you pray for these things but like i said you need to be fighting them as hard as possible and if you wake up and they stole your body fluids wake up and repent and ask God to send angels to go take the body fluid back and to, you know, to torture the demons that did that and whatnot and have that repentance. Repent to God, say, Lord, I'm sorry that I fell to this sexual dream. Please help me to overcome, but don't feel condemned that it happened. You should feel condemned if you continue on in willful sin of pornography and masturbation month after month after month or just in general, you know. Um, the Bible says that whosoever does not believe in the Son of God is under the wrath of God. So if you're still continuing on in your willful sin, you are not yet from under that wrath. Um, but once you overcome it, obviously, you're not under that wrath anymore. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to say is don't focus on how bad it's going to be to give up this sin. But realize everything that you can gain in Christ. And you need to have the childlike faith. Uh, to overcome this Jesus says unless you humble yourself as a small child you will no wise inherit the kingdom of God so there'll be many professing Christians who just say oh it's impossible to overcome lust that's most definitely not the case you need to have childlike faith even if you've been doing you know uh, pornography and masturbation whatever it may be for years Jesus says with God all things are possible so you need to have that faith in him that he will enable you to overcome and if you trust in him and you pursue in that faith you will be able to overcome but if you just say oh this is so hard i don't understand how i can give this up you know you're not having that childlike faith and you need to have the childlike faith in the power of god god can give you power over every sin and the bible says there's no temptation which is common to man uh you know that god will not be able to god will not give us to be able to overcome right and the bible says there's no temptation which is common to man that we cannot overcome god will not allow us to be tempted on more than that which we can bear right so according to the word of god you can overcome this the bible says god has given us all things that we need to live a life of godliness right so uh don't listen to people who are saying this is impossible to overcome from a worldly perspective of like AA or just some atheist or something like that or some fake Christian, yeah, you know, it might seem impossible to overcome. And don't think about, oh, I'm never going to be able to watch pornography again. This is going to be so bad. Don't have that mindset. Be like, wow, Jesus Christ is offering me eternal life and power over demons and a relationship with him and all of these things. You know, the devil wants you to focus on just this one thing that you are not able to do, but you are, you know, what profits a man if he watches pornography and, and goes to hell, right? Okay, um, let's see. Realize that the demons, the spirit of lust, will come back seven times worse if you get delivered from the spirit of lust and you go back to it. There are people who they get deliverance from lust and they go back and they get deliverance from lust and they're so loaded up with lust after they have you know gone back and got they've returned to their vomit like the bible says and they've you know washed in the mud once again over and over that it's going to be intensely 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 way more hard to overcome this if you return back to your sin so when god sets you free from it you need to never turn back to that sexual sin 
ever again, you know, and uh, it's very important that we have that mindset, right, that we never willfully uh, do that again, right, and uh, yeah, so let's see, and uh, realize, the last thing that I wanted to say as far as on this is realize uh, during the times of temptation and be prepared, if you know that you get tempted at 9 p.m. every night, or you know that you get tempted when there's this certain image or certain people out and when you have to walk by something on your way to work or whatever it may be you know there's some specific scenarios where there's a high probability of you going to be tempted come into it prepared you know or try to avoid the situation if you have to um, but be prayed up before you go into that situation you know don't be double-minded going into the situation and whatnot and all of these things so just using wisdom in general and recognizing the scenarios and, you know, the specific times where you might be tempted and think ahead that, hey, I might be tempted here. I, I should come into this with my armor on so that I'm not easily falling to it. Right now, I wanted to briefly talk about um, a couple things where you can start to really get a lot of this deep rooted lust out of your mind where you're not dwelling on these fantasies as much. And uh, the first one that uh, I wanted to say is that if you still have a desire to do this, that you don't want to do this, but you recognize that there's a desire within you, you need deliverance. You, you're dealing with, and if it's very strong, you're dealing with a spirit of lust that, that needs to come out, that's ready to come out. You know, certain people might uh, go down in their walk and they've overcome it for a certain amount of time and then all, all of a sudden after like five months or five years of being set free they just have this overwhelming urge and temptation once again of lust you need deliverance and you know deliverance is a lifelong process and uh, just deliverance for you know will help you to have that restoration in the mind and the renewing in the mind uh, in general you know, even I just recently heard someone on the internet talk about someone who was 96 years old and they still dealt with temptations of lust, right? Now, there's a difference between temptations and dwelling upon the fantasies, right? Just because you're tempted does not mean that you're sinning. You know, Jesus was tempted and he never sinned, right? But when you start to dwell upon those fantasies and engage them in your mind, that's different, all right? Another thing is... Um, notice when fantasies of old partners or porn stars or whoever it may be that you did sexual sin with come into your mind and root this out from your memory. If you notice a reoccurring theme of a certain fantasy that you're tempted with, with somebody you had sex with when you weren't saved, or a porn star that used to be your favorite or whatever, willfully in your mind and also renounce it in general, be like, I renounce the soul tie to this specific person you know, or try to do self-deliverance if you're, you know, if you have the revelation of self-deliverance and if you're at that point, um, try to do self-deliverance on the demons that came in through that sexual sin because sexual sin is one of the number one things that will get you loaded up with demons, right? And uh, willfully burn that, that experience out of your mind if you notice that reoccurring temptation with that specific fantasy and fight it and root it out of your memory, root it out of your spirit, root it out of your soul, right? Or yeah, root it out of your soul and just recognize that uh, with that specific experience, the devil is going to try to capitalize upon that and also recognize that he is trying to, demons are going to try to capitalize upon that in your dreams. Many times people will see people they know from their old life manifesting in their dreams it's like am i trying to think about that person no that's a demon trying that talked with a familiar spirit trying to manifest itself disguise itself as somebody that you know for that familiarity so when you're in the dream there's that easier connection and then you're more apt to fall to that sin because there's that familiarity there okay um Let's see, a very important thing that everybody should realize, especially if you just got out of sexual sin, is that the devil, once you get free from sexual sin, the devil will try to use an excuse of looking for a partner as a means, of, as a means to draw you back into sexual sin. 
you know, many people, when they are first coming to God, the devil sends them somebody who is ungodly, or many people are looking for a partner or a girlfriend or a boyfriend right away when they haven't even gotten set free from the sexual sin, or they just did. And the devil is trying to give you that desire. Um, I'm not saying always, uh, you know, I'll talk about that, but many times the devil is trying to give you that desire as a justification of, oh, I'm not lusting after this person, I'm just looking for a partner now, and you have to recognize if the devil is trying to do that to you. For me personally, I started to do this right when I got saved, and I tried to use it as a justification of, oh, I'm just looking for a girlfriend now, but really I was still pretty loaded up with lust, and it was just a justification to, you know, uh, to look for, you know, lustful things, right, to a certain degree. And uh, when I got free from that, when I stopped doing that, I started serving God, and then God naturally brought somebody across my, my path, my fiancé now, um, and, you know, it just came naturally that God put her into my life and uh, it wasn't me having to seek and to seek and to seek after a partner. If that's the case, there's a 99% chance that the devil is trying to entice you with sexual lust and it might, it, there's a good chance it's not going to be the partner that God has for you, right? And um, you need to recognize that, right? So just serve God and keep your eyes open Keep your ear open to somebody who might be, you know, who's serving God like you, who actually loves the Lord indeed, who's actually born again like you and uh, not somebody who the devil sends across your path. Okay, the next thing is recognize it's not a sin to look at somebody. Many, te many times the devil will, will try to uh, get somebody to feel condemned we get somebody to keep feel condemned after they've overcome the sexual sin for just looking upon somebody. Now, it's not a sin to look at somebody of the opposite sex. And the devil will try to say, oh, you sexually sinned because you looked at that person. And uh, that's not the case. The devil's done this to me many times. And I'm starting to recognize that just because I look at somebody does not inherently mean that I am that I'm sinning or that I'm looking on them in a sexual way. Now, like... Like I was talking about earlier, if you're in the place where you're really still bound up with lust, that actually might be the case. But I'm more for, I'm more so talking towards people who have been set free from lust for an extended period of time, for a year or more. Um, you know, Titus 1.15 says, uh, Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving nothing is pure, but even their mind and conscience is, devi is defiled. So you have to recognize is my mind still defiled with sexual sin or is my mind actually pretty pure now and the devil's just trying to put me in condemnation or you know being an accuser of the brethren and trying to make me feel self-condemned and uh yeah but make sure that you are not you know there's a difference between looking at somebody and looking at somebody and undressing them in your mind and you know that's pretty much the dividing line right there okay and the last thing that I wanted to say is you can pretty much apply this to any sin, any demon that might be trying to creep on you. But notice if you are being becoming slower to react, to turn away from sin. If you are starting to look at somebody for five seconds and then you're like, oh, I shouldn't be doing that. As opposed to in the beginning, you were at 0.2 seconds, you looked away, but now it's taking you five seconds, 10 seconds recognize because that lust can be tricky and it can uh, sneak up on people so you know you have to fight that and that's something that people most people have to consciously deny that temptation and like i said about the 96 year old man he was still being tempted with with lust and like i said there's a difference between temptation and dwelling upon the fantasies that the demons are giving you so that's what i got for this video guys i hope that was edifying for you to be able to overcome lust if anybody else has any questions i also have a testimony way earlier on in my channel about overcoming sexual immorality if you're looking for more information there could be some there well it's a good testimony and also there's a good video that is within the video as well too of somebody else's testimony so if anybody needs deliverance from the lust as well too uh you can call me if anybody has any questions 
uh, you know, I got the contact information in the description. So you guys be blessed in the name of Jesus and have a good one.